So the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix has been and gone, and while at the front for Max Verstappen it was pretty much business as usual, in behind there were some other interesting and unusual points. I'm of course talking about Oliver Behrman making his debut for Ferrari. The 18 year old rookie currently in F2 with Prima was forced into action when Carlos Sainz was taken ill with appendicitis at the end of day one's practice. The question is exactly how did he do on debut and how did he fare compared to all these other F1 drivers, some of whom also had pretty good races and others well not so much. Not thinking of anyone in particular here. But that's what this video is for, how I think all these drivers have done. And with that let's get into the best and worst drivers for my race ratings for the 2024 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Fifth worst this time out and we have Logan Sargent. I would say in this one it was less of a case of him actually making mistakes and things, just more a fact of there weren't too many drivers who were that awful below him. In terms of a rating he's getting a 5 and considering an average is 5.5 it's not like he's done extremely bad or anything, so calling him the 5th worst does seem a little bit mean this time round. However based on his performance you look at Alex Albon who's up there getting P11, Logan Sargent just never really looked like he was going to be doing anything special in this one stuck in the Kevin Magnussen train like so many others, however unlike drivers say like Sonoda or Albon, Sargent never really looked like he was making progress, and so that's why for him he's in this 5th worst slot. Next up as my 4th worst driver is Yuki Sonoda. While qualifying went fairly well for him getting into Q3 and qualifying in 9th place to start the race, come race day it wasn't quite as he planned. He ended up as part of that K-Mag train, and I think for me what really kind of made Sonoda's day slightly worse than it could have been was every time he went to make a move it didn't really pan out, and he ended up losing places to others in front of him, such as Alex Albon or Esteban Ocon who both ended up finishing ahead of him. However it must be said for Yuki that in his battle with his teammate he definitely did a much better job. For Yuki in this one it's going to be a 4.5. While not horrifically bad it is just a little bit disappointing and maybe if some of those moves had come off he'd be getting a higher rating. Next up in my third worst spot is Valtteri Bottas. Valtteri really hasn't had a great start to this 2024 season. In Bahrain there was an incident on lap 1 plus an extremely long pit stop. This time around he was just generally towards the back of the pack. Finding himself as part of that Magnussen train however one thing I did notice was at first he wasn't actually on the back of it. It was only once everyone had been backed up for quite some time that Valtteri was there in that train. If you look at where his teammate was for most of the race with Joe Guan Yu up in sort of like 11th place, only finishing down the order because of a bad pit stop later on. For him he's going to get a 3.5 for this race because it honestly really wasn't the best. Second worst now and it's someone who I think we all expected to be doing a lot better, Daniel Ricciardo. For this one it was really just a bit of a mess, he had a really long pit stop, admittedly that was during the safety car though so he should still have been with all those cars that were ahead of him. However, like Bottas as I've just mentioned, he was a little bit off the back of that Magnussen train until K-Mag really slowed it down. Then you combine that with where his teammate Sonoda was who was attacking the cars ahead and looking to make progress, whereas Daniel just never really looked like he was going to be going anywhere and just generally looked fairly slow in this one. Couple that with a spin that he had towards the end of the race, ironically with Sergio Perez driving by, and that's why it really wasn't the best performances for him and why he gets this second worst slot. For a rating it's going to get a 3.5 because the majority of the race was the same as Valtteri and while he did have that bad pit stop that put him back a bit he also had that spin to make his rating a bit worse. Coming in is then the worst driver for Saudi Arabia and I don't think there's going to be any questions here, it's Lance Stroll. The first driver to really make a big mistake during the races this year as he crashed out on lap 7, clipping the inside wall and then heading straight on into the barrier ruined his race straight away. I think for me as well the thing that really makes this bad is that it's exactly the same mistake that he made in practice, like I mean exactly the same. Clipping that left inside wall whereas he got away with it in practice he didn't in the race. You couple that with the fact he's in a top 5 car and that crash has most definitely cost them points. Then you also look at someone like Fernando Alonso who's even further up the order finishing in 5th place and you can see why it's really not good enough from Stroll. So for a rating for Lance it's going to be a 2, it's the fact that you've completely wrecked your race so early on on lap 7 from a mistake that you really shouldn't be making. Into the top 5 now and we're going to be going to a McLaren, maybe not who you would have expected based on last year but this time in Saudi Arabia it's Oscar Piastri. The Australian second year driver had a really solid race, admittedly he was stuck behind Lewis Hamilton for a lot of it but to finish up in P4 comfortably ahead of the likes of George Russell or Fernando Alonso is overall a really good performance for him. 
When you take into account that McLaren were probably the third or fourth quickest car, to be up in fourth place maximising your points is all you can really ask from Oscar. Yes, it would have been nice to see him possibly clear Hamilton. However, it must be said that when you look at the performances, most people would say that Lewis did a good job of defending, and so for Piastri to not get through it didn't really hurt his race too much as well. For Oscar, it's going to be a 7.5, it's a really solid drive, well above average, and definitely in the top 5 for me in this one. Not to mention the fact that because of his qualifying, he was able to get the better strategy when it came to pit stops, which also aided his race. In fourth place then, and we have Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. The Ferrari was definitely I think the second quickest car in this one, but Leclerc was looking so comfortable the entire time. Obviously the Red Bulls were a bit too far out of reach, but the fact that he was never really under any pressure from anyone and had a pretty quiet race, made the most of the safety car and generally overtook people quickly, didn't get stuck behind other cars, which is why he's above Oscar in this one. Charles will also be pleased to get that first podium under his belt for this year, especially considering that last time out in Bahrain it didn't exactly go to plan. For a rating for him, it's going to be a 7.5, the same as Oscar, however he is just slightly ahead because he didn't have that getting stuck behind other cars. Into third place now and someone continuing their run of solid races and it's Sergio Perez. Ultimately in this one for Checo, it was fairly straightforward. He qualified reasonably high up and just had to make a few overtakes here and there. Got side by side with Leclerc into turn one but couldn't make it work, however he knew that he had the car underneath him that he could be patient and bide his time. Did get hit with the unsafe release penalty, but ultimately that's just not on Checo. He also finished roughly 7 or 8 seconds behind Max in this one, which when you compare to last week is a big improvement, and is in that kind of range where you say yeah that's a bit more reasonable for a second driver. And so for Checo overall, he's not made any mistakes, he's had a solid race in general, and so he's going to get an 8, it's another second place finish, and for Checo I would put it just ahead of the likes of Leclerc and Piastri because he's not made any mistakes and just driven a really solid race. Up next then in second place, and it's someone who no one expected to even be on the grid this year, Oliver Behrman. Jumping into that Ferrari and only having 45 minutes of practice, no thanks to Joe Guan Yu in FP3, to then qualify in 11th place, nearly knocking out Lewis Hamilton just 0.036 seconds away, is a really good achievement from there. Coming into the race, I think if he had kept it clean, most of us would have said he'd done a decent job but the fact that he managed to finish up in 7th place ahead of the likes of Hamilton and Norris, admittedly with a better strategy, but you've still got to get the job done. Plus I think for me what was so impressive was that later on in the race, not only was he catching up to George Russell, but when the team said to him, hey, we'd like you to increase the pace, you've got Norris and Hamilton both catching you behind on fresh soft tyres, he was able to do that, and in the end seemed fairly comfortable ahead of those guys. Obviously as well above all of this is the fact that he's just 18, was in F2 earlier in the weekend, and he just jumped in the car and delivered straight away. And so for Oliver Behrman, this may be his one and only appearance this year, but he gets an 8 as it's a really well-deserved rating. That of course leaves first place, which in this one is going to go to Max Verstappen. Another fairly straightforward win for him and fairly commanding at the front. What I would say though for Max races is maybe it wasn't quite as dominant as others. For example, didn't lead every single lap, didn't end up with the fastest lap, and his gap to Perez on track was only 7 or 8 seconds compared to, you know, the 20-30 seconds we've seen in the past. It's still a really solid performance from Max, don't get me wrong, and worthy of the top spot in this one. For a rating, it's going to be an 8.5, which is obviously the highest grade for this race. However, as I say, it's not quite in that sort of 9 category, because in terms of Max Verstappen wins and how dominant he can be, it's not quite up there with those other top, top tier performances. It's still really solid, however, deserving of an 8.5 and the top spot in this one. So there you have my race ratings for the 2024 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and what ratings you would have given the drivers, plus any feedback for the video in general. If you have enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up and make sure to get yourself subscribed to the channel. But until next time, take care.